All right, hello. I am Dr. Haley Nelson. I am a pediatrician at Valley Children's Hospital, and I'm an ambassador for Safe Kids Central California. I'm also a mother of three. And if you ask my kids, they'll tell you that mommy sometimes worries a lot, but that's because I know how children can get hurt. So I'm very excited to be doing these lunch and learn sessions to provide parents and caregivers with information on how to keep your children safe and prevent injuries so that we can have happy, healthy children, and avoid hospitalizations. Today's topic is all about smoke detectors, and I have a special guest, Mackenzie Dern, from the Lalissa Ann Roosh Byrne Foundation, joining me today. Mackenzie, it's so great to have you here. Hi, it's so good to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> Mackenzie, can you tell us a little bit about the Byrne Foundation for people who don't know what you do? Of course. Um, I am the regional manager for the Elise and Bruce Burn Foundation. Um, I cover the Central Valley, but our foundation is a statewide nonprofit organization. Um, we started in 1971. So this is our 50th year of being an organization. So it's a big, exciting year for us. Um, our mission is to significantly reduce the number of burn injuries through prevention education and to enhance the quality of life of those affected by burn injuries. Um, and so we try to provide a lot of support for our burn survivors. Um, we provide support from financial support to recreational support. Um, and we just, we want to be there and um, help people through the healing process and through their journey. Um, we really strive to bring together healthcare workers, um, firefighters, EMS, burn care professionals, survivors, and our community partners into one big family. <laughs> that's wonderful. One big family and helping people survive and thrive. So that's great. Thank you. Exactly. All right. So smoke detectors. I know you brought some props and we are going to talk about those. So starting off for parents at home, like where where should we have smoke detectors? Like what, start, start with the basics. Where, where do we wanna have those smoke detectors located? Well, smoke alarms should be in every room. Um, it is important to have them around. Um, there are different kinds. There are some that look like this that have the battery in the back. Um, and there's also some like this that are a 10 year Warranty, you don't have to change the batteries for 10 years. So these are um, kind of the newer technology, but you still want to have them um, in every room. Um, they should also be outside of your sleeping areas. So in the living room and in every level of your home. So if you have a two-story house, you wanna make sure you have them downstairs as well as upstairs. Um, they should be on the ceiling of your room or high up on the wall. Um, because smoke rises. So the higher the smoke alarm, the better off you are. Um, and you want to make sure you keep your smoke detectors away from kitchens. Um, if they're really close within, we like to say about 10 feet, um, you can have a false alarm go off if you're cooking something a little too hot or things like that. <laughs> And I've always had, um, I have a smoke detector in my house that's right by my bathroom. And so if I take a really hot shower, the steam makes my smoke alarm go off. So I would highly recommend keeping them away from bathrooms. <laughs> okay. So away from steam, away from the kitchen. So at least that 10 feet range, just so in case what you're making doesn't turn out the way that you want it, um, that you've got a little bit of time before you set off the smoke alarm and then every bedroom. So that's important. Okay. Yes. And then as a pediatrician, so I have some of my patients who are deaf and hard of hearing, or if, um, if there's a parent in the home or someone um, who's not able to kind of respond to the smoke alarms that you have, what are the other options out there? Um, so there are different options. Some smoke detectors have a strobe light. So when the, not only does it sound, but it also has a really, really bright light mm -hmm. that just flashes when the alarm goes off. So that okay. helps um, people wake up to a smoke alarm if it's in the middle of the night. Um, there's also a technology that, uh, you, it's called a bed shaker. 
So you put your smoke detector and you connect it to your bed and it physically shakes your bed and it shakes you awake. So you know that, okay, there's something going on because my bed is shaking. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a lot of different options out there. Okay, we're gonna shake you awake if there is a fire, get outside. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so once you have your smoke detectors where, where you need them, you've adapted things. If you have someone um, in your home who can't hear the alarm, um, then what do we need to do for maintenance? Like how often am I supposed to be checking batteries? Like what are you actually supposed to do with these? Um, so they say that you are supposed to check your smoke detectors every month. Um, and okay. on most of them, there is a button that says test. So you just press it and it should beep. And if it doesn't beep, then that is a sign that you need to change your batteries. Um, it is also mm -hmm. really good practice to get into changing your batteries, even if you don't need them just to change them um, every daylight savings time. So uh, the next one's coming up. So I know in my house, I always go through and change all my clocks, change all my batteries. And that's the best way to stay safe. That's an easy reminder for changing those batteries when we're changing our clocks and, and to think about it. And if you haven't done your monthly test, go ahead and um, at that time, you know, go see um, what your smoke alarm, if you haven't set it off recently, like what does it sound like? Mm -hmm. and, and even teaching your kids. And um, one of the things that I hadn't really thought about for right now during COVID is that my children are currently at home doing homeschool. So they haven't been in the classroom doing their, you know, the earthquake drills and the um, fire alarm drills and all of these things. And that um, maybe that's something that I should have been doing at home with, with my kids. So doing those, like the family emergency plans. So do you have tips for, for what, what should I go home and do um, with the Nelson children tonight? What's, what's my plan going to be? <laughs> Um, so it is very important to have an emergency plan in place. Um, mm -hmm. I know it's always something that's kind of uncomfortable to talk with your kids because fire is a scary thing, um, but it makes it a little less scary when you have a plan and it's a well-versed plan and you go over it all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I know when I was a kid, we would, um, we had a plan every once in a while, my parents would randomly walk into my room and be like, Hey, what's our fire escape plan? And then I'd have to tell them what it was. Um, so it was always a fun way to make sure, um, that I knew what it was. Um, and for a fire plan, um, it's usually a meeting place where you go, mm -hmm. you hear the smoke detector go off, you just get out of the house and you meet in that location and you just trust that everybody else will meet in that location. Um, and it's also a really good way for firefighters to know that, hey, I'm a family of four, only three of my family members are here. There's someone else still in that house. So then they can go in for a search and rescue versus just a fire attack. So it kind of changes yeah. their game plan. Um, and we preach and preach and preach, do not go back into that house. Um, the firefighters have equipment and their turnouts that help them and protect them from fires. So they are trained to go and look for people. So meet at your, at your spot. <laughs> okay. Yep. So finding that location and, um, and going over this with our kids from the different places they might even be in your home. So if we're downstairs, how do you get out of the house versus if you're upstairs? So, um, I know that for my two older children, there's kind of an awning outside their window, like they could go out their window and wait for someone to help them there if they couldn't get out. Um, and some of the other things too, that I have learned and kind of getting excited to talk to you about the drop low and go. So how smoke rises. So we want kids to um, get down low and then also touching that doorknob to see if it's hot. So before you open a door to try to get yourself to that meeting location. So yeah. And it's always a good plan um, to talk to your family prior of if you have a heavy sleeper in your family and you know, okay, if the alarm goes off, they're not going to wake up to have their room on part of your exit plan so you can grab them as you go. Um, and as always, it's recommended that an adult does that. So if um, you know, or if you live with grandma and grandpa, um, 
swing by their room on the way out to make sure that they're up and out of the house. <laughs> nice. So planning that exit plan so that you get everybody um, on your way out. But I think great point too earlier that you said of that we're not going back in as hard as it sounds. I'm like, give me goosebumps to think about that. Like as a, as a parent, that if someone doesn't make it out, that it's not my job to go back in and that um, that help is on the way. So um, teaching our kids how to get out, how to call for help um, and kind of what to do next. So going back to our smoke detectors, we actually do have a question. So we're on Facebook Live. People send in your questions. So we can see someone wants to know why are smoke alarms round? Why are they round? Yeah, I, I'm like, kids, this is a great, you know, that's it's a nice circle, um, but why aren't they squares or pentagons or a different shape? And I don't know the answer. I'm curious if, if you have heard any fun facts about that. Um, I actually do not. That is a really good question and totally stumped me on it. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I would love to okay. look it up and I will let you guys know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll look into that and we're hoping to also interview firefighters. We're going to have, have lots of these series coming up for all sorts of different, um, tips. So if we don't answer, um, your question today and there is something that you want answered, um, we'll reach out to the experts and find out more. Yeah. Great thing. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Anything else for the kind of the home planning and kind of the crawl low and go some of the other tips for just at home that. Um, you want parents to know about today? Um, well, it, it goes along with when a smoke detector goes mm -hmm. off. And um, if for any reason you um, are in the house and it's really smoky, the lower you are to the ground, the better, because as I had mentioned earlier, smoke rises or no, I'm sorry. Yeah. Smoke rises and smoke then it, we're going to crawl down low comes back down. <laughs> yes. And so rooms can get really smoky really fast. And that can, if you inhale that, um, it could actually potentially burn you, the inside of your lungs. Um, so we mm -hmm. do recommend you stay low and get out as fast as you can. Um, if for any reason you can't get out, um, a lot of times kids get really scared. Um, and so instead of getting out of the house, they hide or they run into a corner and just stay there. Um, and so when firefighters do come in, we really try to tell our kids that, hey, firefighters might look a little scary because they have all of their turnouts on, they have a mask, they have their breathing apparatus on, they have an oxygen tank. Mm -hmm. um, and to just tell people that they're here to help you. They're not, they're not here to hurt you. Um, and we always say run to them, not away from them. Um, so that's one thing that we always want to, um, instill in our kids. Um, and lastly, if for any reason you do get your clothes catch on fire, um, we tell people stop, drop and roll. Um, that was actually how our foundation got started. Um, we founded stop, drop and roll in 1971. Um, and it is the most efficient way to put out fire um, on your skin or on your body. Um, so you stop what you're doing, drop to the ground, and and roll, roll. Right side <laughs> until all of the flames are out. Um, and if you do get a burn on your skin, um, it is important to cool it right away. But you want to cool it with cool water only, no ice, no <laughs> anything else, just cold water. Um, and it's recommended that you run it under cool water for three to five minutes. Um, and that really helps stop the burning of that tissue and um, reduces the severity of the burn. So it's important that to know those steps just in case something happens. And hopefully if you have your smoke detector, uh, you won't have to go through all of the extra steps. <laughs> Okay, so we've got our smoke detectors. We're going to make sure that they're working. If there is a fire, you hear the smoke detector going off, you're going to have that plan with your family. Um, if there's smoke in your house, certainly the drop low and go, um, including your exit plan to get people who might be sleeping um, on, on your route out. Yep. And then um, if in chance you did catch on fire, the stop, drop and roll. And I remember that from school and that it's something that, you know, I think 
um, lots of kids have heard that message, but that it's so important because it, you know, it really reduces the injuries. Um, and so if you do have someone who's injured running the cold water, no ice, no anything else, just run some cold water and then you want to bring them in um, for medical attention. So. Yep. Yep. Lots of good tips today. Um, I don't know that we have any other questions coming in right now through our Facebook Live, but certainly um, if you do have questions, feel free to submit them. You can follow um, Mackenzie and her Burn Foundation for lots. They've been posting all sorts of content um, as well as Safe Kids Central California. So there's great resources out there. Here's our smoke alarm tips that are going back up. So um, like we said, smoke alarm in every room. We can't say that enough. Changing those batteries when you change your clocks because daylight savings is coming up. So great reminder to just change your clocks, change your batteries, crawl low and go, have your emergency plan. Um, and then if you do need specialty smoke alarms that there's lots of different options out there on the market based on what um, you might need. So please consider liking and following us on Facebook. We're at safekids.org. Um, you can email Christina Pazma, who is our excellent trauma nurse at Valley Children's, and she does all things safe kids. And so she is our resource guru and amazing. So you can reach out to her. And we'll be back here live on March 17th. We're going to be having our next special guest, someone from Poison Control, and we're going to be talking about how to keep children safe from accidental poisoning. So thanks for joining us today. See you next time. Bye.